And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special friend of Oscar, without whom this show would not be official, Mr. Bob Hope. Thank you. Thank you, Merle. Is she beautiful? That's what we call Acapulco gold. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bob Hope, known as, at this affair as Up the Yangtze Without a Ping Pong Paddle. Actually, I'm your next friend of the Oscar. What else? It takes talent to be an enemy. No, but I am. I am a friend of Oscar. And after what he's done to me for the past 30 years, you might say we're intimate. They actually wanted a stand-up comedian at this point, which is me. After what I lose on April the 15th, I have to stand up, believe me. But I want to tell you, this is our big night because winning an Oscar means never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> oh, by the way, the management has asked me to make a special announcement. In case of an earthquake, you will walk to the nearest exit. I'll grab the Oscars and run. <laughs> but this is a great night for Hollywood. Tonight, we set aside petty differences, forget old feuds, and start new ones. This is the finish of the Oscar race, the final pit stop for midget talents to have their egos inflated. It's lucky I'm not the jealous type. But what a turnout here. Everybody's here, even Howard Hughes. He's sitting in that empty seat in the back row. <laughs> but this is the real Hollywood magic, this glamorous audience with their gleaming diamonds, beautiful gowns, and expensive coiffures. You can't tell the 40% who are working from the 60% unemployed. <laughs> but it is. It is an elegant, an elegant audience. All those furs, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and the women look good, too. <laughs> we have dignitaries here from the furthest points of the globe. Potentates, Maharajas, Mayor Yorty. <laughs> but this is a strange business. Just think, Frank Sinatra announced he was quitting show business and they gave him a humanitarian award. <laughs> I refuse to believe they're trying to tell me something. No, I really hate to see Frank go. Italian singers are so rare. But this has been a strange year in our business. Yesterday I saw a movie that didn't have Elliot Gould in it. But it's a great night. I'm rooting for Love Story to win because the producer was so brave. Imagine having the courage, the audacity, and the daring in today's market to make a picture about a boy falling in love with a girl. <laughs> I took my wife to see Love Story, and she cried all the way through the whole movie. They get pretty upset when you make them pay their own way. <laughs> no, we've got to go back to movies when, when the girl says, I love you, it's a declaration, not a demonstration. With the kind of pictures they're making... With the kind of pictures they're making these days, you can win an Oscar without getting out of bed. Actually, I liked it better when you walked out of a movie crying because the story was sad, not because you weren't built like the star. And a lot of titles were deceptive this year. Who'd ever guessed that Five Easy Pieces was about one male piano player? I know this is the year of kinky sex, but the owl and the pussycat? And how about cold turkey? Did you ever think you could make a picture about a frigid bird? Airport was a movie about a plane that takes off with a mad bomber on board and a pilot who can't pass the balloon test. That plane must have been called the Flying Titanic. Then there's Where's Papa, based on the diary of Richard Zanuck.
The Baby Maker, the Bing Crosby story. <laughs> Patton was the story of a man who wanted to win the war, but not the Oscar. <laughs> it's, it's funny, his nomination for Patton in World War II may start World War III. No, but I think George C. Scott is out here because as I parked my car, there was a guy with a chest full of medals and a swagger stick letting all the air out of the tires. <laughs> Not only that, as I passed him, he slapped me for being out of uniform. <laughs> and how about Helen Hayes being winning again for her performance in airports? Isn't that wonderful? No, she got an Oscar for uh, her performance here in 1932, and here she is again. How greedy can you get? <laughs> and Carrie Snodgrass was nominated for A Diary of a Mad Housewife, that wonderful movie about Martha Mitchell. <laughs> and, of course, everyone was delighted when Chief Dan George was nominated. It's the greatest thing that's happened to the Indians since John Wayne's horse got hoof-and-mouth disease. <laughs> Chief Dan George. He was all right, but why couldn't they have given that part to an American? <laughs> and Alex Weldon was nominated for special visual effects in Patton. And if George Scott wins and walks on the stage, we'll find out how good Alex really is. <laughs> Ryan O'Neill not only won a nomination, he started a whole new category, Leading Boy. <laughs> As if anyone as if anyone that young could feel any real emotion. I don't know why they use him when there's so many great, more mature lovers laying around. I'm only kidding. I don't have a jealous bone in my body. I'm a solid lump of green blubber, ladies and gentlemen. As we all know, the industry is having a few problems, not the least of which is finding an Italian to appear in The Godfather. And Hollywood has, has to withstand more than money pressures in that case. I've seen the rewritten script of The Godfather, and it's the most exciting account I've ever read about the Cub Scouts. <laughs> I had no idea those little tykes control that many judges. Tonight, the winners will be go home with an Oscar tucked under their arm. For the first time, the Academy has come up with something for the losers, a free scholarship to a skydiving school. This year, Hollywood really has to economize. Last year, the winners celebrated with champagne and caviar at the Century Plaza. This year, it's Kool-Aid and pizza at Shakey's. <laughs> That's the way it is in Hollywood today. I met a panhandler the other day, and I said, why don't you get yourself a job? He said, what, and give up show business? <laughs> in fact, some movie people met with President Nixon at San Clemente about this the other day, trying to get a tax break. They sent Charlton Heston, because he's president of the Screen Actors Guild, and because he's experienced with miracles. <laughs> Heston's a very persuasive talker, and after the conference, Charlton was wearing the business suit and the president was wearing the sheet. <laughs> no, we sent all the heads of the studios to plead poverty. Mr. Nixon looked out the window at their cars, and they were bigger than Air Force One. Now, Mr. Nixon admitted he is not too knowledgeable about movies. He thought MASH was a documentary about Agnew's tee shots. In conclusion, I just want to say that many of us come here each year expecting fate to smile down on us, and what do we get? The fallout from Brewster McCloud. But such is the prestige of this occasion that there is honor even in losing. In any event, with the massage parlors closed, I wasn't doing anything else tonight. And... And I'll be here in case George C. Scott really doesn't want it. Thank you very much.